Coming up next on The Voice of Alabama Politics, gambling chaos. Also, child care is a priority. And Maryland Lands wins in a takedown. No one can defeat Zoya! Fight like a girl. All this and much, much more coming up next on The V. Welcome to the voice of Alabama politics, where we tackle the tough issues so you have the hard facts. I'm your host, Bill Britt, and as always, I'm joined by Susan Britt, research guru extraordinaire, and Josh Moon, investigative reporter and columnist at APR. Welcome. Howdy, howdy, boys. Hey, y'all. Hey, you know, there was an earthquake up in uh, uh, North Alabama this past week <laughs> when Maryland lands kick the mm -hmm. daylights <laughs> out of the her Republican candidate. He was very gracious in conceding. Yes. Uh, Susan, Marilyn Lands surprisingly won in a, what could only be termed a landslide. She did, by 25 points. The interesting thing was that she ran on women's health. Yeah. She ran on abortion, which I, in 20 something years, nobody's run on that particular issue unless it was you know, being against abortion, mm. you know, pro-life. Mm. Uh, she ran on that. She ran on the IVF issue, which apparently got a lot of people's attention when it came to when personhood should be. And so that she made this an issue of her campaign. And it uh, uh, was also a recoil against the MAGA movement, I think, as well. Um, but I have to give kudos, too, to you and Josh, because... Josh was the one that helped vacate that seat. Well, that Josh did that. Uh, and you covered it on MSNBC this last week beautifully. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Josh, you know, and then people probably don't remember, but most Alabamians do, is that David Cole, who, who won that seat after Mike Ball retired, you found out that he uh, didn't live in the district and you pointed it out for a year before anything <laughs> was done about it. Yeah, yeah, no, it uh, I did. I mean, it was uh, it was a pretty obvious scam to me, and uh, and you know, going back to my uh, my days as a as a sports reporter, I was used to tracking down uh, phony addresses that parents would use to get their kids to a better team, uh, and so I mean, it was just the same sort of deal. He had, he had uh, tried to claim a, a friend's address for his own in order to get into the district. His home was outside of the district. You, I mean it. Literally, I would drive by the house every day, taking my my daughter to her dance class, and I, I would see him out front in this house that didn't where that did not belong in the district, and it just you know it went on for a year or so. You're right, and uh, and listen, kudos to to Steve Marshall, uh, the AG's office finally you know paid attention to this and uh, and went after him and and you know uh, tackled some voter fraud on his side of the aisle. Yeah. I mean, the only thing you can say is, you know, good good job doing your job. Well, I mean, you know, basically you had to beat him like a ridden mule to get him to do it, but he did it. Uh, but I, I think, and, and and John Wall, the head of the Republican Party, came out and said this is all poo-poo and it was just luck. Mm. But let's, let's really look at this. Luck? Yeah, that it was luck that she won. He said luck was the word he used. Now. For 25 points? <laughs> <it's luck. laughs> well, you know, he, he talked about it was low turnout. Of course, he doesn't mention the fact that one of their guys in a special election only won by 300 votes mm -hmm. uh, in, in a special election. But we won't bring well, that up. But wait a minute. But wait, wait just a minute. I, I mean, did somebody tackle the Republican voters and keep them from going to the polls? <laughs> I, I don't understand what happened. Yes, it was a it was a special election. So you, you expect lower turnout. But the lower turnout is typically pretty indicative of the overall feel. Of, of the district itself. It and mm -hmm. so, yes, we're talking about, and while it was lower turnout, it wasn't nearly as low as what it has been in some other special elections. Oh, no, no, uh, no, you're no. Talking, Yeah, you're talking about a district that has somewhere around 45,000 people, not the 350,000 
uh, that was all of Madison County that was put up on the Secretary of State's website. Yeah. Uh, but th- it was about 45,000 people, and we ended up with roughly half of the voters that came out uh, versus a general election. I would like to see the breakdown of how many females voted. Yeah. Because I'm telling yeah. you, women are mad well, and they're the, paying attention. One of the things I think we, we saw in that district is the there are more cal- college-educated mm-hmm. people per capita in that and area than for in, anywhere in, in the state of Alabama. In 2021, Donald Trump won that district by one point. Mm-hmm. So it, it was drawn to be a Republican stronghold, but the district is changing and maybe it's just simply because of the education of the folks that live there. And they're tired of the nonsense, I think. When I talk to, to people with uh, college degrees and, and advanced degrees especially, they, they go, I'm tired of all the nonsense. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's be realistic. But, you know, if you look back just 20 years ago, when you heard a Democrat talking about uh, uh, female re- reproductive rights or IVF, the, the mantra was, Rare, legal, and safe. Well, you know, they safe, thought rare, Roe v. Legal. Wade was. They thought Roe v. Wade was safe. Yeah. Right. They found out with the Dobbs decision, it was not. Well, stare and decisis is only stare decisis until they decide it's not decisis. There anymore. you go. Uh, <laughs> say that three times. <laughs> but Josh, it was. It, you know, she deserves a victory lap, and so mm-hmm. does the National Democratic Party, who came and, and helped her win that election oh uh, she does and and i'll say you know i i feel like people have been a little too late on the left uh to to take on the abortion issue yeah. i think they have been scared of it uh naturally it's not been a winner uh for the democrats um you know in, in any shape or form in the yeah. last you know 15 or so year and so you know i think that they are they're worried about it but you look at every contested election that has happened especially special elections in contested districts, every single one of them uh, has gone to the Democrats on the basis of abortion rights. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think, you know, the IVF issue just kind of highlighted the, the problems that can come from such an overreaching uh, thoughtless law that that, that the Republicans have put in place, not only nationally, but especially in the state of Alabama, when you remove the the exceptions for rape and incest. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a bridge too far for most people. I, I think back, uh, you know, to, to, to women I know and have known through the years uh, who have said, look, I am pro-life for me, but I am pro-choice for you. And I think we're seeing a lot of that right now where people are doing that. Uh, I, I think, it, it is important what we saw. Uh, not necessarily will this change Alabama greatly because of the gerrymandering, but it should give people pause and realize that these issues are not that popular in the state of Alabama, and the people do not feel represented here. Yeah, they don't. I agree with you on that. I mean, it's it, it's shown in in study after study that what the people actually want, i.e., ability to vote on gambling. Uh, you know, exceptions for abortion and other issues that people are feeling completely disenfranchised by the legislature. All right, we're going to have to leave right there. You're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. It's time. Time we had someone in Congress fighting for us. As Democratic leader in the State House, Anthony Daniels helped steer millions of dollars into our district, fighting to raise wages, invest in our infrastructure, and create good jobs. Now he's passed a new law, removing state taxes on overtime pay, putting more money in our pockets. It's time for Anthony Daniels for Congress. One of us for all of us. I'm Anthony Daniels, and I approve this message. Your home is your most valuable asset. But what if someone tried to steal it from you? Property fraud is one of the fastest growing areas of fraud in the country today. As a district attorney, I've seen firsthand the devastating effects of property fraud. That's why I'm proud to support the Montgomery County Probate Court's REACT program. REACT is designed to protect your property and to give you peace of mind. By signing up, you'll receive an email notification if a document is filed against your property. This program is a game changer. 
It has the potential to prevent fraud and protect countless homeowners throughout Montgomery County. So don't wait. Sign up for REACT today and protect your home. Protect your home with REACT. Sign up today. As a paramedic, you wouldn't believe the things that we've seen. I've seen all types of horrible things. I mean, we're there basically picking up the pieces from your worst day. Everyone is just driving and not paying attention. We all have the same goal. All of us want to go home alive and safe and harm nobody else in the process. Slow down, be careful, care about the other people on the road. Don't be the reason that someone else doesn't go home tonight. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Susan, the first uh, uh, 17 days or so of the legislative session, 17 out of 30, uh, was a red meat festival. Uh, you know, any cannibal uh, this side of uh, the Mason-Dixon line would uh, enjoy having to feast on all the red meat the, that they, they threw out there to the base. Now, we're being told that we won't see that uh, in the second half so much. But I, I, I think we would be remiss if we didn't look back on how this is about control rather than empowering. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, my definition of government should be about empowering its citizens to live a better, healthier, more free life. What we've seen is bill after bill to control the liberties of individuals and groups. Basically, also what you're seeing here is, is an attempt to mix religion with politics. And let me quote James Madison here. He says, religion, by one of the founding fathers, okay, religion and government will both exist in greater purity the less they are mixed together. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what they're doing now is they're going in and they're trying with the libraries and the bathroom bills and all. You know, they're working on this transgender. They're working on the LBGTQ to stir up fear in people yeah. and to try to control them yeah. through that fear. And, and Josh, a lot of this is aimed at the LBGTQ plus community uh, uh, mm -hmm. because they fear it, but also because they know they can get people cranked up especially about transgender use. Yeah, it's, um, you know, as I said before, there, it, you, there's so few transgender youth uh, that are out in, in our society. Yeah. Um, you know, and so most people, they don't know anybody. And you know, the folks who have encountered, you know, families with transgender kids and things, oh, uh, they, we all know that, that these folks are, are just, you know, trying to survive. Everything is as, as normal and as healthy as, as you can be. And, you know, it just, but th that fear that is trying to be instilled of anything unknown um, is, is something that's really, uh, it's really one of the more hateful sessions that I have, that I have, have seen in, in a while. I mean, the, the, the way they've gone about these things um, with a kind of a complete disregard to what experts say, what doctors say, what parents oh, yeah. are telling them. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just, it, it's really, really hateful and mean. I've, I've got a little story I'd like to tell here. I, okay. I, I read an article the other day where these English teachers were getting together in New England somewhere, and they were going to oh, take some that. some students to Walden Pond to study Henry David Thoreau's writing. Right. Well, he was a trans dentalist. Yes. So... A group of mothers got together and just how dare they try to take their children to Walden Pond and turn them into, you know, you know, transgender children. Yeah. They, because of the word trans. Trans and dentalist. Uh, you know. Yeah. That was but, a favor uh, of mine. Well, you know, again, you know, we, uh, if you poll people about using Arabic numbers, they're against that too. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, it's just the ignorance they're promoting and the fear they're promoting is it, it, just, you know, bouncing off of everything. It, it, it's just getting into a fury. Out well, there. I've decided that I am no longer singing America the Beautiful because it was written by a woman who was engaged in a Boston marriage. And you, if you don't know what that is, Go you look can it look up. it up. But I am just refusing to sing go. about Purple Mountain Majesties. There you go. <clears throat> what is a fruited plain anyway? I have no clue. Is that kind of cereal? 
Josh, Josh, I don't know. Hey, something good, what we're hearing is going to happen in this next half of the session is that uh, they're really going to work on launching this workforce boost, which includes such things as providing tax credit for child care, for industry, and for individual uh, uh, folks that provide child care. That's a huge aspect of this. And I think they're on the right track there. Uh, yeah, I, I would say that they're, they're on the right track. Um, you know, I, um, that <laughs> they're on the right track, you know, roughly three years behind the Democrats uh, that, that tried to push. Honestly, I, I, you know, <coughs> y'all look, you laugh, but I mean, this was part of, of the original Biden plan to get us out of the pandemic that, that Republicans fought against and killed. There was, there was the child care tax credit yeah, in there yeah. that helped millions of working families pay for child care yeah. and gave them a huge boost to go back. And, and if we had done this, if we had kept this in, our workforce participation rates would be way higher than they are right now, because that is the number one thing holding people back. Listen, I, I have a cousin. Okay. He's, he's a working guy, works at one of the plants here in North Alabama. His wife is a nurse. They have three kids, three great little kids. They pay $750 per week Oh, whoa! for child care, okay? For child care. That's, that's, uh, to, uh, before and after school care to meet their schedules because of the shifts that they have to work at their jobs. Right. You, you know, I mean... the. That, that's what you're talking about. When this is, these are real people that are battling these things, and and you've got to go to help. And listen, I, I've given Will Ainsworth and his his uh, the group that he put yeah, together yeah. the the initiatives. One of these w was in that that came out of that group was uh, I mean they were fantastic things that that should have been done a long time ago, and they're the things our legislature should be working on. Go and do these things, yes. help real people, help the working folks, pass the budgets, and get the hell out of town. <laughs> well, and that's the thing that. Parker just did a study, their, their 2023 study. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they said is that the people of Alabama feel that the legislature d does not listen to their needs. Exactly. That's to what To their I was wants, to, to mm -hmm. what they have on their agenda, mm -hmm. and that they've gone off on this far right MAGA death cult mm -hmm. that wants to control everybody and move it all to some kind of authoritarian world view. I'm with Josh, do the work. This is policy. For those of you who don't know what policy looks like, this is policy. This is where you're actually working for the people of Alabama towards solutions for their everyday life. Yeah. This is what we send you to Montgomery to do. I mean, again, we don't send you there to, to tell parents uh, what their children can read or learn mm -hmm. that that's par that's called parenting. It is not your job. But again, they think it is. Josh, last word, five seconds. No, you're you're absolutely right. I mean, uh, it, it, when we're talking about the library situation, I mean, yeah, the, the library's job is not to police your children; is to provide the books that people might want to read. Okay, right. they don't discriminate against that. And the legislature's job is to go and make our lives a little bit easier remove some of the barriers, help the working class folks out, help boost your workforce, raise the tax rate, uh, revenues up so we can have nice things. Well, sometimes we just can't have nice things. <laughs> anyway, you're watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. We'll be right back. It had been three long days. The echoes of the cross still filled the air. There was a darkness that was palpable. A sense of dread that was all-consuming. Fear permeated the landscape. Powered by an inconceivable loss. Hope was dead. But in the distance was a sound, the sound of earth moving, of foundations rattling, the sound of God taking back the world he loved. Darkness had been flooded with light. Fear had been overtaken by hope. 
Death had been swallowed in victory. In that moment, sin lost its power. The grave lost its sting, and evil was left broken in defeat. He is victorious. He is triumphant. He is risen. Jesus is alive. Welcome back to The V, the voice of Alabama politics. Susan, we've got uh, less than uh, 14 days, uh, legislative days, to, to solve the gambling chaos that has been created by the uh, Alabama Senate. And it is just amazing that they had passed bills twice now, almost identical to the one the House sent, Yet, a few people, like uh, Sam Gavan, a few of the other ones, uh, torpedoed that mm -hmm. bill for whatever reason they had that they torpedoed it. And they didn't have to. They could have made compromises, the same compromises that were made the time before. But, again, there was a lack of leadership to get it done in the Senate. So now we're faced with this chaos and you know, as Josh and you and I were talking at, during the break, in this package that Lieutenant Governor Ainsworth put together, there could be in there college tuition, free college tuition for kids mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. they would pass this game. Yeah, and, and that's something that the Parker Report also revealed was that people are willing to pay more in taxes if it means better education for the children. Yeah. And that's not, there's not an age, I mean, age, uh, part on that where, you know, it's just not young people voting or feeling this way or older people voting. But they're willing, they know how important education is. And let's remember, too, if they think this much about education, the importance of education, if you let them vote on a gaming bill, then they can make that choice for themselves. Yeah, I mean, Josh, you, you've reported more on this than anybody in the state. And, and it, I don't know where we get to a bill or not. I, I've been talking with folks who say, yeah, we're going to get to something, but they don't know exactly what. Yeah, well, it's going to be it's going to be worse than what was originally proposed by the House. Uh, the House bill was was probably the best bill that you're going to get passed in this state. Yeah, um, it, it was a lot of thought put into it. There was a lot of uh, work that was put into it uh, by Chris Blackshear and uh, Andy Witt yeah. and uh, even the speaker and uh, and a lot of other folks that worked around this thing. And, you know, there, there has been a lot of talk about, you know, who's to blame and, and all this. And, you know, I, I, I want to say, too, you know, when. It's the Senate that's to blame. Yeah, right? it is. The, the senators could have gone in and passed this thing and, and got it got it handled, but they got steered in a different direction. You know, yeah. and I, I think a lot of people were trying to pin things uh, in some circles on the Porch Creeks uh, for because you know that under the Senate bill they're now going to benefit. Uh, it looks like if the, if the Senate bill were to be passed, they would get kind of a monopoly on casino gaming. Listen, the the Porch Creeks were perfectly willing to do this. All right, they 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 took a risk. And, and, and aligning themselves yeah. with some of the traditional track owners. And, and they said, we're going to stand with you. And they stood with those folks for, I mean, a solid four years yeah. and, and, uh, and trying to get this thing passed. And yes, they would have benefited ultimately, but I, I, at the same time, it was still going to be something that was better for the state overall. We're talking about $1.2 billion annually yeah. is what we were going to generate off of that house bill to do a variety of things like we were just talking about. Well, and as you pointed out this week, it doesn't help when Supreme Court Justice Lynn Murdoch is sending <laughs> all of these emails to these senators that are just packed full of inaccuracies. You mean lies? Yes, lies. I was trying lies. to get around lies. that. We, we, around yes, that about, about, you, you're about scared about them again about the Porch Creek and that this is going to, there's all this hidden hidden language in that bill that's going to give them more power than they've already got, you know, or it was in the bill. It's just, they're pulling the skin, what, sheepskin over your eyes. Really? Is that the business of a Supreme Court justice? Well, I don't former, think so. Former. Former. Yeah, well. Yeah. Josh, yeah, no, it's not. That. It's not. It's not the business of a, of a former Supreme Court justice, especially not to tell you know what is pretty to other attorneys. I mean, I, I've talked to attorneys about this. They were laughing about mm -hmm. some of the claims that were made in there. I mean, because there, there are things that had never happened. But 
you know, that is indicative of why we're in this situation. OK, and I wish people would understand this and would and would call folks at, at the as call your lawmakers yeah. and, and tell them you're tired of this, because this is what's got us into this position is people who stand to gain personally. Yeah. Telling outright lies about things. Uh, and listen, I, you know, maybe Murdoch believes this stuff. So, you know, I'm not I'm not going to tell you that he's outright lying about it. I think there were some lies that were in there, but I'll, I'll say that it, it, when we're talking about this situation, this is how we got here. People who have the authority and the understanding to misleading folks down, a, down the wrong path. So we can keep this fight going perpetually because there's so much money to be made by lobbyists and lawyers and people who are in the middle of this fight year after year after year. And what I voters mean, need to remember is they are infringing on your right to vote on this. This is not their decision. It's the voters' decision whether we have gaming in this state or not. So they're they are actually infringing on your right to vote on this. Well, your when, right to choose. when he straight up tells them that the Porch Creek can do things they can't do. Exactly. That's lying in my book. Because <laughs> there's no way you could read the Indian gaming regulations and come away and think what he said. Now, maybe he's just that ignorant. I don't know. Uh, but I've talked to the man over the years. He did not seem foolish or ignorant at all. But I think it's important to note, Porch Creek never asked for what they're about to give them. Right. And they've always been willing to compromise so they could get a comprehensive bill passed with caveats, as and with everybody they with like, caveats. They, but like everybody else, yeah, they listen, just want this issue settled once and for all. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we've been we have been critical in the past of, of the Porch Creek oh, gotcha. things that they have attempted to do. Right. Okay. And and because we didn't feel not necessarily them personally, but we didn't feel like the legislation that they were pushing was the best thing for the state Correct. overall. Correct. What they have attempted to do in this situation is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And they should not yeah. take a hit for the for this sort of thing. No. It's, it's it's the wrong message that's being sent by a lot of people over this. And the folks that you need to blame are the ones in the Senate that have screwed this whole yeah. thing up. Yeah. Well, I think if you call your senator and tell him how disappointed you are, he might change his mind or she might change his mind. We only got about 30 seconds, and I really wanted to get to this. Steve Marshall, our esteemed attorney general, came out this week. He spoke at a meet, meeting last week at a meeting of, 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 of Republican women and said that he was against school lunches because the Department of Agriculture uh, had just changed it. So when referring to uh, people in, in written form, you didn't refer to them by sex, but by gender. And so basically he's now saying, he, he's really against Alabama getting money for free school lunches, Susan, because they're not using the word sex, they're using the word gender. Is this what we pay him <coughs> for? I don't think so. He's the attorney general, not the hall monitor, yeah. okay? Go do your job. Stop meddling all this stuff just trying to get points. Well, Steve Marshall does not want any children of any gender or sex to have a free lunch in Alabama because the federal government's bad. All right. You've been watching The V, the voice of Alabama politics. You watch us because we watch them.